and welcome to my channel, Joyce's Affordable Glam Life 360, or just Joyce. I'm on here with a new Unsolved Mystery Thursday, and this mystery is about the Puma Punku um, site and the mysteries that lie there. So if you would like to know what the mystery is all about and how I achieved this look, then keep on watching. Puma Paku in Bolivia is one of the world's most mysterious ancient sites and it is an advanced Adian ancient architectural achievement. It is located 45 miles west of modern day city of La Paz. La Paz Puma Paku is situated in the enormous ancient city of Taiwanaku. The city predates the Inca presence in that part of South America. High upon a desert plateau of the Andes Mountains at an altitude of more than 12,000 feet, Taiwanaku is important in Inca traditions because this is the place where it was once believed the world was created. While many of the structures are still standing centuries after their inhabitants disappeared, most of the buildings are scattered and broken around the area. This pre-Incan stone structure was once so impressive that its magnificence was described once as inconceivable by Spanish uh, conquistadors in 1549. Others who have visited the site during the 16th and 17th centuries described it as wondrous though unfinished building with gateways and windows carved from single blocks. Archaeologists are confounded by what Puma Panku was and how it looked. The purpose of the massive structures has yet to be solved. The entire region and its people were important in the ancient in the ancient world of South America. Theirs was the dominant culture of the Lake uh, Taikaka Basin. Again, I'll put that. I'll insert the real way of saying it, the right way of saying it. With an empire covering many amounts of the area in present day Bolivia, Peru, and Chile. Taiwanaku was a bustling metropolis of Andes from AD 500 to AD 1000. Puma Paku is part of the Taihanwanaku historical site. It is host to numerous ancient temples, Imerian language that is spoken by the people of the Andes translate Puma Paku to mean the door of the Puma. Taihanaku Ko is less than a quarter mile northeast of Puma Panku. Scientists believe this was once the center of a civili civilization over 40, 000, with over 40,000 inhabitants. Puma Panku and Taihawanako are part of a large temple complex or monument group. Puma Panku is thought to have been unimaginably wondrous that were adorned with polished metal plaques, brightly colored ceramic and fabric ornamentation, and visited by costumed citizens, elaborately dressed priests and elites decked, decked in exotic jewelry. The Puma Paku, as well as the surrounding temples, function as spiritual and ritual centers for the Taiwanaku. Taihan Wanako is mostly likely one of the greatest Native American civilization uh, civilization appears to some to have peaked from 780 to 1000 AD. The temples of Puma Manku, Panku and surrounding area may have been home to about 400,000 people. This culture seems to have dissolved abruptly around 1000 AD. Researchers are trying to figure out why. The mystery of Puma Maku lies in the precision and complexity of the structures that predate. The mystery of 
Puma Panku lies in the precision and, com and complexity of the structures that pervade the ruin. The finely cut doorways and remaining stone blocks bear no chisel marks and many interlocked with very fine precision. One of the construction blocks weighs about 440 tons, which equals nearly 600 full-size cars. Other blocks are between 100 and 150 tons. The quarry for the giant blocks was on western was on the western shore of Taitaka. It was 10 miles away. There is no known technology in ancient world that could transport stones that that were that massive in weight and size. Andean, Andean people of 500 AD had simple reed boats that would not have been able to move, that would not have been able to move, move them. There are some curious facts about the stones at Puma Panku. First, they have been covered with such they have been carved with such precision that it that is not expected from primitive civilization. Each stone cut perfectly perfectly to interlock with the next and hold together without the support of mortar. Some say the stones carved with machine like finesse. Others believe the use of far more advanced technology than contemporary civilizations to have known. Second curious fact are stones are megalithic proportion. The larger blocks consist of red sandstone, which has been determined by chemical analysis. Plus, how was it transported up steep incline from the cur cur from the excuse me on that from the quarry? The third curious fact was the way and andesite was used in the temple's construction. There are smaller andesite stones used throughout Puma Panku. They were not used as large structural pieces. They used it more for facings and carvings. Many andesite carvings were used to depict an entity. Archaeologists today believe to be that it was to be Pan-Andean deity and forerunner, deity and forerunner, to to the Incan god of creation, Vera Cocha. The most notable of depictions is in a structure that is referred to as the Gate of the Sun. It is thought to have been a calendar that was used to track the solar year that is very different from what is used today. This structure was carved from a single slab of andesite. The central figure depicted as a person holding two shafts wearing a headdress or maybe or maybe with rays of light emanating from its face. The reason why andesite is unique is that archaeologists believe that Andesite could have only originated from a quarry 90 kilometers away, which was on the other side of Lake Taitakaka. Taitakaka? Is that how you say it? Okay. Yeesh. This appears to be an enormous distance to move as much stone as there is at Puma Panku. Another reason andesite is unique was the decision to use the stone from so far away opposed to sandstone. For example, uh, depicting deities may suggest a cultural significance of andesite to the ancient society of Taihawanaku. So again, how were these gigantic stones moved and what was the purpose? Austrian archaeology archaeologist uh, Arthur Posminski just after World War II had a hypothesis was, that was considered ahead of his time. Posminski worked at the site for decades. He estimated 
that Puma Punku was far older than academics believe. He examined the ruins and their relationships to the stars to conclude that the ruins to be dated as far back as 15,000 years old. Puma Punku is located above the tree line. This means no trees were cut down in order to use wooden rollers. There is also no evidence of the wheel in Taiwan Khan culture. A complete Puma Punku appeared for the first time in centuries by first having a digital model and then 3D printout at a 4% scale. Alexi, Alexi Ronich, an archaeologist with the University of California, Los Angeles, reported in a study. By using the 3D printing scale models of the building parts, Varnich and his colleagues could explore how structures may have fit together through trial and error. Varnich, Varnich's results not only presented a near complete Puma Panku, also delivered a solid piece of evidence that negates one theory that the site was built by visiting extraterrestrials. Believers claim that its architecture was so unlike any other known structures on Earth, so it must have been engineered by alien architects, Varnich explained. By studying the model, Puma Panku appears to have been a sizable complex. A sizable complex of plazas and ramps adjoining a massive T-shaped platform and it featured gateways and windows carved from single blocks of stone, according to Varnich. Puma Paku is believed to date back to around 536 AD. Many authors disagree and believe that the site is much older and could predate the Inca themselves. Experts argue that the site was abandoned before it was completely finished. An important note to share is that the, the Incas themselves denied building the Taiwanaco complex, which means that the Taiwanaco culture existed independently of the Inca, predating them as well. The ancient site of Puma Baku is part of an even larger complex that once belonged to the ancient Taiwanaco culture. It predated the ancient Inca by millennia, the number of megalithic stones found on the planet. The incredibly precise stones, precision cuts, and polished surfaces have defied explanation for centuries. According to oral legends, the first inhabitants of Puma Paku were unlike ordinary humans and supernatural powers which allowed them to carry megalithic stones through the air with the use of sound. The most famous features of Puma Baku are its so-called H-blocks. The H-blocks at Puma Baku were approximately 80 faces each. The H-blocks match each other with such an extreme precision that the architects most likely use a system of preferred measurements and proportions. Archaeologists argue that the transport of these stones was accomplished by the large labor force of ancient Taiwanaco, Kukku. Several theories have been proposed as to how the labor force transported the stones. These theories remain unproven. The two of the more common proposals involve the use of llama skin ropes and the use of ramps and inclined planes. Somehow transporting massive blocks of stone across great distances, the ancient engineers that built Puma Paku and Taiwanaco were adept at developing a civic infrastructure at this complex, constructing functional irrigation systems, hydraulic mechanisms, and waterproof sewage lines. The blocks present at Puma Paku were so precisely cut it suggests the possibility of prefabrication and mass production, technologies far advanced of the Taiwanaku's Inca successors hundreds of years later. Researchers believe that these two blocks of stones were quarried near Lake Taikaka, approximately 15 kilometers from Puma Baku.
Other stone blocks found at Puma Paku have been quarried near Cap Cap a cabana peninsula about 90 kilometers away from and across the lake. Each stone at Puma Baku was finally cut to interlock with the surrounding stones. With the surrounding stones and the blocks fit together like a puzzle, forming load bearing joints without the use of mortar. Precision challenges of modern engineering abilities. Common engineering technique is to cut the top of a lower stone at certain angle and placing another stone on top of it, which was cut at the same angle. What baffles scientists in, uh, and engineers and archeologists is the precision with which this was achieved. The precision with which the angles have been utilized to create flush joints indicative of a highly sophisticated knowledge of stone cutting and a thorough understanding of descriptive geometry. Some of the joints are so well placed and so precisely locked into the place that you wouldn't be able to fit a paper in between them. The stones have perfect angles that are as smooth as glass. Brian Dunning, who hosts the Skeptoid podcast, has described the site's row of H-shaped blocks that have about 80 faces on them and all match each other with great precision. He suggests that the stones suggest prefabrication not found at other Taiwanaku sites. And I quote, in addition, some of the stones were held together with copper fasteners, some of which were hammered into shape and others that were that were poured into place molten." Unquote. Dunning applying logic to the mystery suggests that perhaps the Puma Baku blocks were not chiseled, but poured using concrete or some other such material. There is no evidence so so far for supporting the poor poor concrete theory. And scientists have very few answers regarding the most basic questions of who, what, when, and why. Archaeologists will not entertain the idea of using lasers, ancient alien visitations, or other means of transporting blocks of stone for miles without mechanized vehicles. One more possible clue to this story, though, are the mummies of Puma Paku which has been preserved on one of the Taiwanaku's most sacred sites, provides evidence that all members of society from infants to the elderly regularly use psycho, psychoactive halluc hallucinogenic plants. It remains to be shown whether their descent into other dimensions offered these early people a special insight into how to create their megaliths or even how to contact beings who could teach the advanced mythologies. So in the end, um, I decided to do this mystery after I did my last one. Um, and if you didn't see my last one, I will link it up here somewhere. Um, you could take a look at it about the Coral Castle in Florida. And that one um, I did because he said he mastered some of the ancient uh, ways of um, stone masonry and so forth and putting together stone so forth so I decided well this would be really cool to try to research what are the ancient civilizations and how they um how they did or how they say or if there was a mis and their mystery of how they put together their temple um and so of course another mystery of how did how did they do it as well so I thought well, it'd be interesting to see. And of course, it's the same theories, you know, extraterrestrial, paranormal, uh, dimension, uh, going into a different dimension uh, from, you know, their ancestors, so forth. So I found it just really um, interesting that, that when we cannot explain how certain 
cultures have done something or have done uh, or it has happened we you know the same theories apply and we can't prove it and so isn't that kind of having faith um that in terms of they did it and basically um either it was through some somehow of having knowledge of how to do it like why would we this is another thing why would we think that ancient civilizations would not have the knowledge to do certain uh to build certain things or to know certain things in terms of nobody here <laughs> at least i don't think so <laughs> from the ancient from ancient civilizations like the incas and so forth um i heard it tell us how they did it and so you know it's kind of like trusting that they did this for a reason, whether it was their beliefs or um, whether it was their beliefs or they did it or it was some sort of ritual, maybe, um, and that they did it because that was what they believed. Or so I just find it really interesting um, that ancient civilizations, as well as uh, the coral castle and certain other structures in the world, Egypt, so forth, and ancient cultures, I find the mystery and I find it very intriguing and kind of mystical in a way about what what it was like then, their life and and um how did they just day to day life. Um, you know, it's it's sometimes hard to put your wrap your mind around certain things that have happened thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, so forth. And I just find the mystery of knowing how different cultures and different people lived. And um, I've always found history very, very intriguing. Um, very, I've always found it very fascinating, um, of course, and mysteries are very fascinating. And so I did this uh, mystery about the Puma Panku uh, because I did um, the Coral Castle and so I wanted to do a to then follow that with uh, kind of like a like a history of an ancient culture and so how have certain cultures certain people have mastered ways of doing things that we typical I guess uh people um or cultures can't understand and sometimes I'm like it's right there in front of our faces but we just can't see it so I just find that really intriguing and really interesting and so I don't know if we'll ever find out or really actually know how Again, certain cultures, certain people, uh, like Ed Leeds uh, Skeleton, um, was able to do what he did and what this culture did. So again, I hope you enjoyed this mystery. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. It helps me out. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you already are subscribed to my channel, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your love and support. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.